Hello and welcome to my tips for success in homeschooling video. This video is part of the homeschool show and tell collaboration that is hosted by Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from the Wabak Way. All of the information will be linked below and I really hope that you will check out all the other homeschool mamas that are part of this collab to get as many tips and resources that you can. As I share my tips, I just want to give you a little bit of a frame of reference. I have been homeschooling for nine years and over the years I have learned a lot. One thing that is important when you're giving tips on success is to define what success is. So when I looked it up, success means an accomplishment or a desired result or outcome. And so in that vein, I really suggest getting a notebook and sitting down and really thinking through what is it that the mission of your homeschool should be? What is the vision that you have for what your kids are going to remember when they are adults and doing their own things? What is it about their homeschool experience that you want to carry them through their life? And for me, the end goal is relationship building. And so in that main base of our homeschool being relationship building, building a relationship with God and understanding what that means, me and our kids, my husband and our kids, my kids among themselves, our family, our friends, all of those relationships are something that I want my kids to leave feeling are a very strong base. In this crazy world, it's so easy to be blown off course. And I think having a base in relationship is important. So with that being the goal, I have three tips to suggest. Number one, to be flexible. And I'm gonna share a little bit of what that means in our lives. The second thing is, is to be willing to pivot, but maybe not in the ways that you're thinking. And the third thing is to Try to be more student-led. So with flexibility, the first thing I think is important to know is that curriculum is not the end-all, be-all. I know that a lot of people will say, oh, I don't need to get to the end of that workbook, or I don't need to finish this curriculum by the end of the year. But I think there is some part in a lot of us that feels like if we don't meet those benchmarks, that we're not doing maybe everything that we should be doing in our homeschool. One of the resources that I have used that has helped me so much with flexibility is Teaching from Rest by Sarah McKenzie. There is this balance that we need to maintain that goes between being academically rigorous and being laissez-faire about school. And I do think for us, finding that balance is a daily occurrence. So with flexibility, one thing that I have learned is what has worked the year before or maybe the entire span of your homeschool will not necessarily work forever. And I think that's something important to realize is maybe just when you think you've got your stride and everything's working well, you suddenly start to feel like maybe something is off and your kid doesn't seem to be enjoying it as much, you're kind of dreading it. They're not really getting the concepts that they're, they should be, or you're just seeing that they're going through the motions, but it's not really getting down into their being. And so I really think there needs to come a place where you realize, hey, this has worked all along, but it's not working right now. Now I will say, I'm not a fan of changing curriculum mid-year. There's obviously times when that is appropriate, but one of the things that I said right off the bat with flexibility is to realize that the curriculum is not the end-all be-all. I think for the most part, you could have any curriculum and figure out how to make it work for your family. And that means maybe not doing the whole thing. Maybe you're supplementing. Maybe you're stopping the day with math worksheets and going to games or manipulatives or, you know, the kitchen or whatever it is that you need to add in to make that concept feel real and exciting to your kids. My next tip is to be willing to pivot. And that may mean letting go of your plan. That may mean planning more. 
you've got to figure out within your homeschool what pivoting means. For us, it means that while I really value our morning meeting time where we sing hymns and do a devotion and memorize scripture and memorize poetry, maybe it's a day, maybe it's a season, but there are times when doing the morning meeting just isn't working for whatever reason. Maybe it's a scheduling issue. Maybe it is just there's a challenging time in math where the concepts are so complicated that it is taking longer to do math. Language arts, maybe you're ending up with a lot of tears over spelling and you're feeling like it just really isn't worth it. What can we do differently? So this is where you've really got to switch. And I will say, you know, pick your time on when you've had to pivot. It's just never ending. So for us in our homeschool right now, that is in Spanish. So what I chose to do for Spanish this year just isn't working. What I decided to do was go to the library and see what resources are at the library so that that way I'm not throwing more money at the problem, completely giving up on what it was that we were doing, but instead looking to see what free resources are out there. I also checked out some websites that offer homeschool Spanish curriculums to see what the philosophy is that people are doing just for my own education and understanding. So we found a couple resources at the library. We're very lucky. Our library allows us to check books out for one month at a time. And then if no one's interested, we can actually renew it. And so we've found a couple resources that will work and we're just gonna try it out. That isn't to say that we've given up on what we were doing before or that we are changing completely, but we are in this moment turning from what we were doing and trying something else just to see if it's a better fit. Sometimes your pivot is really big. Your pivot is saying this curriculum is not advanced enough or my son or daughter is not at this level. And then you really do have to figure out how are you going to proceed. At that point, you can just choose get the lower level and do that. You could try customizing it. But again, for us, with our main goal being relationship building with God, each other, family, friends, that is the core of what I base my decisions on. My third tip is to be more student-led. I've been homeschooling, as I said, for nine years. I started out very classical education oriented. I liked having a plan. I liked knowing what we were gonna do. We were gonna do narration and dictation and we were gonna follow the well-trained mind book, which again, I love it. But I have slowly moved from being very classical education minded with a little bit of Charlotte Mason in there, slowly moving me towards an unschooling side of the scale. Now I realize for some people hearing unschooling is unsettling, but the further I go along in this process, the more I do realize Charlotte Mason's principle of your kids being their own person. And that means they have their own interests and I want to be the one to encourage their pursuits. For instance, last fall, one of our pivots was that language arts in the morning with my youngest was just becoming a battleground where he needed to do it, he didn't want to do it for a plethora of reasons, and so I decided we're just gonna pivot. We're not getting rid of the curriculum, but we're gonna do something different. And so we got Illustory, which is a kit where your child can write and illustrate a story. And so his language arts, basically from mid-November until we broke for Christmas break, was writing his story, illustrating his story, and editing it. And that entire process of learning the, you know, idea of the setting and the characters and climax and the denouement and having the whole idea of how a story gets written, tying in different parts of this. He typed parts of it up on his iPad before copying it down. So there was technology and typing. So we did that and it was great. My oldest, didn't was not interested in illustrate. She wanted something that was a little bit more challenging. And so she wrote on her iPad an entire manual on how to care for praying mantids. Last year she hatched a raised them, bred them, 
has more Uthikas now for next year. It is her thing that she loves to do and she wrote a huge manual on it. She wanted that to get printed. And so now we've gone down this whole path of what would self-publishing look like? And it's been a huge learning experience for me and for her, but it's all been student-led. Her interests have led us here. And I will say, it's a time commitment. I mean, she and I sit down every morning and go through editing and formatting and all of that, but it is important. So as I've said, having that core of relationship being what all of the spokes of the wheel go out from, one of the assignments we came across was coming up with titles for people in our family. Just as we were learning about how there are titles, I can't remember what the reference was. But when it came to my kids coming up with my title, my kids titled me the one who fights for my joys. And it makes me emotional. To have your kids really see you as someone who fights for their joy and really says and honors them when they say, I would like to write a book about someone who crashes on an asteroid. That's what my nine-year-old wrote, wrote about. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. My nature, you guys know I love planners and having a schedule. My nature is, that's not in the schedule. That's not in the plan. But if our core is relationship building, then we say, forget the plan. Forget the plan. I'm going to fight for my kids' joy, and we're going to see what comes of writing a book about landing on an asteroid. We're going to see what it's like to write a praying mantid manual to, on how to care for them. And that has been a learning experience for all of us. So just to recap, the tips that I suggest is, first, to be flexible. The second one is to be willing to pivot. The third tip is to be student-led. Let your kids have a say and ownership in what it is that they are spending their school days doing. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to go and check out the other videos in this collab playlist. Until next time.